Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of my Lotus Elise build. Uh, remember last time, in my last video, I showed you guys the new wheels, work wheels. So now it's already on the car. So you can quickly have a look. Yeah, apparently the car is on check. Yeah, but you can see the, the fitment. Just get some ideas. It's not too bad. The rear fitment is pretty good. But at the moment, I'm actually using uh, four five millimeter spacer, as you can see from here. So this is the spacer I'm using now. So I use in all corner. I also done the stock conversion all around. Yeah, but the only problem with this is so the idea of using the spacer. So to be honest, I'm not a fan of spacer and. Yeah, technically it's not legal at the moment <laughs> so to use a spacer in New Zealand so I can use a spacer but I have to spend like $700 to get it certified but the problem with the certification is once it's certified so you cannot change other wheels and if you want to remove the spacer you need to spend another couple hundred dollars to recertify again so that's why I'm trying to find a solution and I think today so I'm gonna find out a solution. So today I'm gonna do it and see how things goes. Yeah. So maybe let me show you what's happening from this side first. Yeah, as you can see it has a five millimeter spacer. And you can see the clearance. Probably around three millimeters clearance. So at the moment the wheels spinning freely. But if I remove the spacer, so this edge of the caliper, so this edge will touch the spoke, the inner spoke. So, so I'm thinking, so last time I've been sitting here like half an hour and to think, what's the other solution? Apparently, I cannot grind the, the caliper, so this area. I was thinking to grind probably around three millimeter to make it clear, right? But technically, it's too risky. Then I looked behind, so around the the wheel hub area. As you can see some area around here, and I'm thinking, is it possible to use some spacer around here? Yeah, that, that's why that's why I'm coming this route. So I've been, so I did some research online, so I can get some bigger. Actually, I think this is probably the first time. So for the Lotus Elise S3, to change the bigger rotor and use the original caliper. Yeah, so what happened is most people maybe they just get a big brake kit, but it's. My pocket is not that deep, right? And so I will use a bigger rotor, 308 millimeter, and space the caliper to about one centimeter away from the center of the hub. So I can clear the wheels without using the spacer. So I will show you something. So this is the Don't worry about this. So this is a new fur rotor I'm gonna using. DBA 4000 series. So this one is a one of the latest, not the latest, it's actually quite quite a few years. But it's a, one of the cheapest I can do. Yeah, there's some other option like a two piece rotor or some other things that's too expensive. And the shipping, everything costs too much. And this is the part number. So if you guys are interested, and so I can use this, put it on that, and problem solved. Yeah. So let's get started. So I'm gonna show you guys how I remove the caliper and the brake disc, so the brake rotor, and put a new one on. All right. So I'm gonna get into it now. Yeah. So to remove the front rotor and 
caliber of the Lotus Elise. It's not that hard. But just one thing you need to be careful. Um, especially this uh, brake rotor retaining bolt. So this one is slightly tricky because uh, it has been sitting there for quite a while. And sometimes it might stuck because of the rust or something. Um, so what I'm using later I'll show you. But you have to do it very quickly. Maybe get some uh, WD-40, some CRC spray, lubricant. Let it soak for a couple minutes before you're actually doing it. But to remove the rotor, it's easy. So just get a, the Allen key suit, the size. I already removed the one bolt. I actually removed uh, quite a while ago. So another one similar and remove it. Mm. Because I don't have, I don't have the, like the, the what's that called, the bits, the, big, uh, the bigger bits to suit that one. And so I can use the spanner. But what I'm doing now, I use this. So this is an alternative way. So it's not that difficult to do. If you can do it safely, that's all right. Yeah. Actually not that hard because of the torque spec. So it just, it's pretty light. So you don't have to torque too hard. So just remove it. Yeah, pretty easily so this one can come off yeah, just be careful you don't want to uh, break the line or something you can put around here yeah it's pretty safe and then we just need to remove the retaining bolt so this one I'm using the drill and another bits for the bolt Sorry about the mess. <laughs> yeah, this is my pretty ugly, not ugly, but it's okay. Toolbox. I actually already done the lubricant, so I don't have to do it again. Pretty simple. Put this on, make sure it's on. And so all you have to do, make it quick, right? Make sure the, and one, two, three, yeah. So sometimes you guys just use some like a momentum, some kind of power, but if you use hand to it slowly, you might strip the, like a thread. I was a thread. Uh, sorry about my English. So sometimes I don't know some certain area how to describe. You can see. So you don't you don't want to make it rounded, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. So this one can come right off. Yeah, so this is a original brake rotor. Hmm. So it's for sale now, right? If that one suit. Yeah, actually the quality is pretty good. Let's just put it around here. Yep. Yeah, now let's let's open the box and get one of these put on a car. Yeah, pretty easy. But I think I think actually this thing is it's not that light to be honest. Yeah, maybe similar with the stock one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you got some stickers. So which one's lighter? Hmm. Similar. Yeah, don't worry about it. Because you're the only solution for me. Yeah. 
it's not that easy to open. <laughs> Look at this beauty. Yeah, I'll have a look how this thing works, the, the temperature, that sort of temperature indicating paint. But you can see the, the quality is pretty good. So they have some paint protection, paint, uh, what is it, rust protection paint. Feels like a rubber, some rubbers. Uh, I have to take out the gloves to have a feel. Overall, the quality is okay. Yeah. Remember, before you actually using start using it, make sure to clean it with a alcohol or some brick cleaner stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna do it now. Yeah, just do the cleaning first and before I actually start using it. Well, I'll just have a quick check to make sure this thing suit Let's have a look all right yeah it looks like looks like it's gonna fit right and let's get a retaining bolt on I just have a And what else? The oh, remember. So I have the spacer, stainless steel spacer, and so I'm trying to try out two options. So I have the spacer, so M10 and two millimeter stainless steel spacers. So I can use five of the five of them to make one centimeter space, and just put between the. The mounting point. Yeah, it's not easy to see, but it's just something around there. Yeah, so you can have. Yeah, also ideally you're gonna use the longer, probably one centimeter longer bolt, but it's not easy to find. But I checked, so the thread, the contact, mm, still pretty decent. So even with a one centimeter spacing, so you're gonna still have probably around yeah almost two centimeter, like a one point five, one point one point six. So it's pretty powerful enough to hold the caliber in space. Yeah, and another option is to use it's a one piece right bolt. Oh, not about the, this one is a nut. So use a one centimeter nut M10 between the mounting point. I think this one, it could be a better solution, but I'll try both and see how things goes. Now, yep. So I'm will, I will try to see if this will fit. I think I probably need to push this, uh, I mean the, the cylinder slightly inside to get some space for, because this one is brand new, right? It's slightly thicker than the, the used one. Probably just, you can see, but I will see. Yeah, so I'm, not, I'm gonna clean the new rotor with the, Brick cleaner. Yeah, just a simple spray. All right, I need some fresh air. Right here. <coughs> yeah, pretty simple. Clean it. Now I shouldn't have any problem from the. You can see the brake cleaner is pretty strong. 
so he, it's gonna remove the paint, right? So just do it quick. Yeah, I, I don't know the the quality about this paint, but it should be okay. Give it a go. Here's a little retaining bolt here. Let's put this on again. I mean, so so this problem. Yeah, before I thought there's no other solution apart from changing the big brake kit. But it will easily cost you a couple thousand dollars, and I don't want to do that. Oh, don't don't use too much torque. This one pretty much it's easy. That's enough. So now I'm gonna work on the, the caterpillar first. Yeah. So I'm gonna show you when it's on. I'm still deciding between the bolt or the spacer. Apparently the bolt will be just one piece, probably more solid. The spacer is okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll try it on and show you what I choose in the end. Yeah, just a couple minutes. Okay yeah, guys, so up there about 10 minutes. So the DBA Big brake rotors on perfectly. Yeah, but what, what I'm using is one nut plus a two millimeter spacer. Because this one actually is about like nine millimeter spa uh, spacing. Because if I use this one, it's not gonna work. So the rotor will touch the caliper. Right yet with the help of another two millimeter spacer so it become 11 yeah so now pretty good you have about maybe like 1.5 millimeter spacing uh, like a clearance here also back one not too bad yeah. so the, the contact I mean the contact uh, area <laughs> still pretty good yeah, maybe maybe it's like a one one millimeter less than the recommendation, but it's not gonna impact anything, right? And you can move smoothly. Now, just moment of truth. So if my assumption is correct, so it should have around maybe four millimeter distance. I mean the clearance between the caliper and the wheels. Let's see. So, yeah, where, where is this? Where did the start? Oh, yeah, here. All right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? around 5 millimeter clearance here so yeah I think the solution is good yeah just quickly don't worry about it but you can see no problem anymore and you will have a bigger firm rotor I think it will make, make the caliber look slightly smaller yeah, but that, that's all right. As long as the clearance is not a problem, so I can I can upgrade that one that one later on, no problem at all. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna remove again because I, I need to put some uh, like a thread lock on the bolt and tighten up to the correct spec and put everything together. Also the other side. Also I'm gonna remove the 
the spacer on the back. Yeah, in terms of the spacer on the back, it's quite funny because you can see that my front wheel cannot use the. Uh, if I don't use the spacer, it will hit the caliber. But if I don't use the spacer on the back, 5 mm spacer, so I cannot use the center cap. But it's okay, I can just remove it because because the, the inner, I mean the CV shaft, the outer shaft stick out quite a lot. I have to use the 5 mm space, spacer to clear it. Yeah, but without the spacer, it will have a better fitment. So the wheel can go inside 5 mm more, it's much better. Yeah. Alright, so everything back on. I remove the, remove the center cap. So I have to give up something before I, I mean, give up something to get more. So I'm gonna remove the center, back, uh, center cap for the back. Right here. So now, pretty good clearance. Also the fitment, so I'm gonna lower the car and you'll see the fitment is much better. And so if you wanna complain about my lifting point, so it's on the proper point on jack on the front and check stand. So car so actually I, I don't have to use it. So I just use it as an extra support. But it's not nothing gonna happen if I see. Yeah, I'm gonna just lower the car and show you what it's look like without the lifting. Yeah, now uh, it's on the ground. Let's see, the rotor is bigger. Actually, it looks better, much better than the cross drill one. Yep, because recently, to be honest, the cross drill one doesn't make sense anymore. To be honest. So, yeah. And most importantly is the fitment, it's much better. Yeah, before it stick out too much. So this wheel is already a little bit aggressive. So that's why I don't want to use the spacer anymore. But yeah. Yeah, that's what I want. Now let's move on to the other side. You can see so with the spacer. Slightly overkill, too aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll finish that one and remove all the spaces. I think that's pretty much everything today, but I'll get this one ready and show you guys the final result after I remove everything and put it back on. Yeah, let's see. Okay, guys, so that's everything. All done. See everything pretty good, good clearance. So I'm go I'm gonna go out for a drive. So the spacer removed. See the feet. It's pretty good feet, right? Yeah the front is still slightly aggressive. Yeah. But there's nothing I can do for now. I just leave it with it. It's not too bad. Yeah, I'll go off for a drive to find out if there's any other problem. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions, just leave a comment below. Yeah, feel free to ask. Yeah. Otherwise, that's everything today. So hope you enjoy the video and see you next time.